Oh my gosh, you're not supposed to see this. Well, you caught me with my pants down. I said I wasn't going to go inside the engine. I looked you straight in the eyes and lied right into your face. We've got to change the cam in this thing. We are so out of camshaft, it's pathetic. I want to know what a camshaft will do, but I want to do a camshaft that works with everything else that's stock. The lifters, the push rods, the rockers, the valve springs, keepers, retainers, all of it. So to explain all of that, I think we ought to go over to the engine assembly room. I want to start talking about the head gaskets. A lot of people have talked about, hey, you probably killed the head gaskets, yada, yada, yada. Well, here's some news. The L5P has a way superior head gasket to anything that came before. So 2017 up, a couple of major things happened. First of all, the head gaskets are nominally 10 thousandths thicker, compressed. And the pistons come out of the bore, they project 10 thousandths more. So instead of projecting about 12 thousandths, they now project about 22 thousandths. The head gaskets, instead of being a nominal, and there's three different head gasket thicknesses to adjust for variations in piston projection, an A, a B, and a C. The B is the design point, and they vary by two thousandths in thickness. So on these L5Ps, the A gasket's 47 thousandths, the B gasket's 49, and the C gasket is 51. These are, these are compressed, and even those have some variation in them. I'm giving you the nominal numbers. On the earlier engines, 2016 and earlier, the A gasket's 37, the B is 39, and the C is 41. The clearance from that projecting piston to the fire deck on the cylinder head in all the Duramaxes is nominally 27 thousandths, which is 7 tenths of a millimeter. Well, what did they do with that extra 10 thousandths? Well, they built a way superior head gasket. The early 2017, somewhere between 2017 and 2019, there's an improved head gasket that just flows through production. The next Duramax, I would imagine, will be out there somewhere, 23, 24, I don't know. Uh, and I would expect it to have an even further improved head gasket. But the point being, they've also added two head bolts on the corners, one here and one here. What that does for the whole system, I can't tell you, but it's more clamping pressure. So you've got a more refined system because you, you've literally increased the head gasket thickness, what, 25% or so, and maybe 30%. So what you do with the, la the layers, the structure, the spring back capability of the gasket through hot and cold cycles, every time you fire a cylinder, you stretch the head bolts a little bit. The head gasket needs to follow that. It's called spring back. You can get a lot more here and hold the seal under higher firing pressures. What they did, they made the L5P 20% more capable in every respect. It can handle more firing pressure in the cylinders. By 20%, it went from nominally 150 bar Maximum cylinder pressure at about 183. Uh, of course, we're at 260 or a little over, uh, and we haven't had a blown head yet, head gasket. So what are we doing here? What we've done is we've cut away a head 
so you can see an intake valve, and we've got a dial indicator on that particular intake valve. You can also see an exhaust valve. So these two are exhausts, and these two are intakes. What we're doing is we brought the piston to top dead center, and we're, we're checking the valve drop. The valve piston clearance is what we're talking about. So to do that, we use setup springs or checking springs, which we can push on with our fingers and measure the valve to piston clearance at top dead center. And there we just did it, and it's a little over 50 thousandths. So basically what we have found, and it'll vary somewhat cylinder to cylinder, the tightest one we've found was 50 thousandths on the intake and 65 thousandths on the exhaust. To change the cam in an L5P, you have to pull the heads. You have to pull the front cover, of course, to put the cam in. While the heads are off, you install the degree wheel, you put a positive stop, a bridge, of course there'd be no head gasket, this is, this is bolted down, and this stop stops the piston. You rotate the engine unt until it stops, you rotate it the other way until it stops, you measure the angle in between, and half of that angle is top dead center. So that's how you find top dead center. Mike would set up the wheel in the dyno room, set up the pointer, find top dead center, and then we'd install a head, and it doesn't matter which side, uh, but this is number one over here on the front right. So he set up on number one cylinder and measured the valve drop or the valve piston clearance approaching top dead center from about 10 degrees before top dead center going virtually every degree to about 10 degrees after top dead center. What we're doing is establishing the valve piston clearance that's available so when we do design the cam, we're not smacking the valve into the piston. The total clearance here at top dead center is 50 thousandths on the intake and 65 thousandths on the exhaust. That consists of the distance from the projected piston to the fire deck on the cylinder head plus the amount the valve itself is sunk into the cylinder head. The valves are not flush with the fire deck. So those two factors added together, piston to cylinder head and cylinder head fire deck to face a valve. 50 thousandths intake, 65 exhaust. This is the exhaust closing with a stock cam, and this is the intake opening. So right away you can see, here you've got, that's 50 thousandths. Here you can see at top dead center, the stock cam eats some of that clearance. It gets really tight around five or six degrees before and five or six degrees after uh, top dead center. But this is the available clearance and it's measured vertically between the cam and the piston position all the way through here. This particular one goes from 30 degrees before to 30 degrees after top dead center. We want to eat some of this up with, with the cam we're designing. Can we take it all? No. We have to have some safety in there. The cam traces are with the valve lash, 12 and 12 on the stock cam. So that's the valve lift net of the valve lash. This is the net valve lift. What's not shown here is deflection. When you push this up and the rocker actuates, you've got deflection in the push rods and other areas. So commonly, you could add about 15 thousandths to this clearance for deflection. I intend to move the horsepower peak from 2,800 RPM to 3,800 RPM. To do that, I'm going to have to have the valves open longer to get enough air in to make that happen. We're going to make a comparison 
at 3,400, which is where we made the 912 horsepower. So we'll see what the cam does. Not only were we out of cam, we were out of fuel pump, specifically the Denso high pressure pump, the injection pump. We changed to an S&S Bosch 14 millimeter stroker and that those components are in the engine. We took out the S&S 50 over injectors and moved to 100 over injectors. But since we're running smoke limited, air has to come first. So I'm kind of imagining I need 20% or so more open time on the intake and the exhaust. I don't, know, I don't know if we can achieve that. The other thing that limits cam design is the maximum lift we can achieve. We're staying with the stock valve springs. So Mike ran through a couple of sets of stock valve springs and they had different color coating on them. One was a pink spring and the other one was a green spring. These are both out of L5P builds. On average, the seat pressure, and this is at an installed height of one inch, 614 thousandths, is around 95 and a half pounds on the seat. And the open pressure at 400 thousandths lift is around 178 pounds. So these things have a spring rate of uh, right around 210 pounds per inch in that vicinity. So the installed height on the springs is an inch, 614 thousandths. The highest coil bind dimension we got was 1.186. So it's installed height versus coil bind height. That's the travel limit of the valve. So it's 1614 minus 1186 gives us 428 thousandths to coil bind. If we lifted the valve to 428 thousandths, the spring would stack solid. You don't want to do that. I want to run about a 400 thousandths gross lift on the cam. That gives us 28 thousandths gross lift to coil bind. There'll be 12 thousandths lash on the intake. There'll be 16 thousandths lash on the exhaust. So the tighter one would be the intake. If you add in the intake lash, 28 thousandths plus the 12 thousandths intake lash gives you 40 thousandths to coil bind with no valve train deflection whatsoever. If you add in 15 thousandths for deflection, we're at 55 thousandths hot and winding. So we've done this cutaway to serve a purpose, and that's for all of us to actually see what's going on with the valve action versus the pistons with all the valve gear on the engine. You do the paper study, and that's all wonderful, but this is reality. So we'll visit this reality next time.